everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Mid-American Gardener. I'm your host, Tanisha Spain, and joining me in the studio today are two of our panelists who are going to be answering your questions. We've got Jen Nelson in the house, and also a face you haven't seen for a while, Rusty Malding is back. So um, before we get into everything, let's have you guys both introduce yourselves and I guess reintroduce yourself and tell us what you've been up to. We haven't seen you in a couple of years. Sure. Well, my name is Rusty Malding. Uh, I'm the new site superintendent at Lake of the Woods, which is uh, part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. So uh, we have uh, gardens and trails that we're maintaining. We have operations that we're maintaining out there. Uh, and so that's been keeping me busy here for about the last uh, year or so. Now, landscaping um, it was your heart, right? That was your, oh. your, your gig by trade? Absolutely. Yes, I'm a horticulturist, and uh, for the previous 25 years, I've been a landscape professional, uh, mainly working as a landscape contractor. Yeah. So how are you liking the change? What's it like? What do you... Uh, well, I have a bit of a commute now. It used to be a five-minute commute. Now it's about an hour. <laughs> oh, there's that. But there's lots of time then to, you know, return phone calls and, uh, you know, listen to podcasts and things like that on my, on my drive. There you go. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's really great because I have an awesome team I'm working with. You know, as a small business owner, there's a very small sort of uh, group that you get to work with mm -hmm. daily. And this is just nice because we have a, a, a full team to work with. Excellent. Excellent. Well, welcome yeah. back. Thank you. We're very excited to have you. And we posted your photo and told folks that you would be back. And we got some uh -oh. some yays and oh, some welcome right. back. So folks are eager to no, have no, you back in the fold. No polls. frowny faces. No frowny faces <laughs> yet. It depends okay. on how you do today. Right. So you better behave and keep it together. All right, Jen. Hi, I'm Jen Nelson. <laughs> I'm a horticulturalist. And I am also an adjunct instructor at U of I. And I write a blog, Grounded and Growing, at groundedandgrowing.com. Um, I like to answer all sorts of horticulture questions, mm -hmm. especially veggies and houseplants. And it's about that time. It is. Ooh, I've got the itch. Mm -hmm. Let's see, last week or a couple of weeks ago when it was really warm, we had started the week with tornado warnings oh, and yes. then ended yeah. it with freeze warnings. Yes. Right. And it's just back and forth and I'm just ready. I'm ready mm -hmm. to settle into spring. So, all right, let's get into some of our demonstrations and things. Rusty, you brought some oh. uh, branches in, if I I'm I did. Not mistaken. I brought in some all kinds of things. Because so, it's time to start pruning. It is. And I brought in a thorny subject to start with. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no gloves? No gloves. I'm <laughs> barehanding it. So we'll see if there's anything left of them whenever we're <laughs> done. Um, so rose bushes, right? Mm -hmm. It's that time of year where if you're going to do dormant pruning for rose bushes, we're, we're hitting right the sweet spot right now. And so one of the things I just wanted to talk about, you know, people kind of have a... Um, maybe sometimes some concern, you know, caution, it's a rose bush, what, what, what am I gonna do wrong? Most of the rose bushes these days are, are shrub roses and are pretty indestructible when it comes right down to it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of knockouts and some other things out there that have taken over the market. And so, but we do need to do some care to them. Um, so dormant pruning, um, you're basically looking at doing uh, about three things, okay? Remove any dead, um, you're gonna remove weak or crossing rubbing branches, and then sort of reduce the height and sort of open up the interior so that you get good um, airflow in the summer. Um, what I like to do is sort of looking at this. Uh, um, this is, it, if, if this was a, a, an actual rose bush, you can think of it being in the ground. Let me pull out my pruners because you, know, you knew they were coming. <laughs> um, I'm seeing like here. there's a lot of mass up in here and I want to create space. And so I would actually go through and I'm going to cut this piece out right down in here and loppers can sometimes be a very good thing i didn't think you were going for that one so i just, was going for that i one. did not expect that. oh yeah go go brutal <laughs> and go harsh or go home that's what i say yeah, i kind of see where you're going with that <laughs> yeah and so now i'm kind of left with these with these other two branches and if this is you know this is what six eight inches right here i'm going to reduce most roses back to about an eight to twelve inch height it seems to be a good height and I'm looking for, if you can kind of see, you've got buds mm -hmm. that's right okay. here by my finger. Mm -hmm. There's a little red bud that's starting to come out. I'm gonna look for buds towards the exterior and I'm just gonna make a cut, let's see, right above that on both sides. And so I'd make the other cut over here on this side too. Um, this one, kind of have, there's a bud here. That's close enough to the outside. We'll make it there as well. And I'm just a little bit above where that bud is at. So you got just a little bit of, uh, of wood that's going to heal over in those spaces. 
Um, exterior facing, you've really thinned it out. Mm -hmm. There are multiple buds down, these, these stems are gonna break. And so you'll actually wind up with a nice flush of growth in about a month. Wow. Um, that's going to come up and fill in, and believe me, it will grow back. It absolutely it'll look just will grow like back. What, it'll look just like what you pruned by just, the end of yes, the season. Yes, and by doing it now, you're not really interfering with the new uh, floral set. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you wait until June and you're like, oh my gosh, it's too big, mm -hmm. um, by then you're starting to um, maybe detract from some of the, the uh, flo uh, flowers that are coming up yet this season. I, I truly did not anticipate that. I really didn't. Like, that was a shocker. Vicious. That was a shocker I know. Some there. clients of mine are like, what did you do? <laughs> You're like, just trust, trust me. me. <laughs> just a year trust later, me. I, they had me come back, so. <laughs> <laughs> It works. Now, when you're talking about the blooms be or the buds being on the outside, mm -hmm. what is the advantage of that or why are we looking for that? Well, I'd like to have the first leader coming off and you can kind of see like this guy here is, is, is pointing up from the outside. So that first initial shoot's gonna come this way. You have, ah, here's an okay. interior bud here that's gonna, it's gonna wind up breaking, but then your first leader is coming up into the interior. That's gonna um, interfere with like uh, some airflow in that space. It's gonna also be a more problematic for crossing branches, which are weak points and potentially can be a spot for infection to, to take hold. And that's what you're trying to avoid, that crossing. Okay, exactly. that makes perfect sense. Exactly. And is it time to start pruning up and shaping up all of our shrubs and bushes? I mean, we've sure. had people ask about lilac and all sorts of things. So is now a good time for everything? So um, yes and no. Uh, it depends, right? It's a, right. <laughs> That's a classic short answer. It depends. Yes, it it depends. depends. <laughs> um, you know, anything that, that blooms in the summer, now is a perfect time to go after it. There's a, there's a few caveats, like a, um, oak leaf hydrangea is one you probably don't want to go too crazy on. But um, any summer flowering shrubs, absolutely. And most of them will tolerate this kind of dormant pruning just fine. Your spring flowering sh uh, shrubs, those are going to bloom on last year's growth. Mm -hmm. So by removing those buds at the end there, I would have removed the, the flower set for this gotcha. year. Now sometimes you just, you gotta cut it back because it's getting to be too big, like some mm -hmm. viburnums can get out of control. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you just sacrifice one year's worth of blooms and to control the size. Okay. Um, so. All right, thank you. All right, we're gonna move to a question. This is from Eula Browder. She wants to know how to grow potatoes. And that seems pretty timely as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just at um, Menards and they've got all the seed potatoes and everything on the end caps. And I was trying to just get the dog food <laughs> and get out of there, but everything is out. So um, I know you do grow bags and you've I got have. some different techniques. So what is a really good way for someone who's never grown potatoes before, before to start? Um, even there's a number of grow bags out there that would be a nice way to do it on the patio um, and Seed potatoes, you want to buy the smaller, the better. Mm -hmm. You can buy bigger ones and cut them apart so that they have at least one eye, like where the sprout is coming off. Mm -hmm. where you want two to three eyes per piece, mm -hmm. ideally, but just one is technically enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you buy the smaller seed potatoes and you just plant that whole potato and you actually start it at the bottom of the pot or the grow bag and just mound it up with a little bit of soil and as it's growing, you keep adding more. More and more, more layers. More and more layers, gotcha. yeah. And some people you will use compost or use even shredded leaves, and that's so that's easier to harvest because you don't uh -huh. have you just kind of shake it off. I've seen people use straw out in the garden, oh. or or piles of leaves out in the garden. If you have that space, not everybody has that mm -hmm. space, but this is the perfect time. And there's a there's a number of. Uh, Old wives' tales about times to plant potatoes. Isn't isn't St. Patrick's Day one of them? Uh, I hadn't heard that one. Good Friday. Good Friday is, is, is the one, one of them. Friday. Heard the most. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day is when my father-in-law plants cabbage. Okay. okay. That's that. Okay. That's the one he subscribes. I say I know St. Pa I know St. Patrick and yeah. Good St. Patrick's <laughs> and Good Friday are in with the spring crops for uh -huh. some things. Uh -huh. Yeah, but definitely. Um, you'll see them at Menards. Uh, our local grocery store has seed potatoes this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, onions are another good one to plant yes, really I've early. Seen, I've seen those. Yeah. Uh, do you grow potatoes? Uh, actually, potatoes are the one thing that I grow pr fairly well. Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah. Yes, give us, some, give us all those tips. Uh, no, sure I don't, I don't know that there's it. anything special that I'm doing. Is this maybe the other ones I don't get in early <laughs> Yeah, ah, gotcha. I usually had a window where early season I can kind of get some things going and then there's like a 
two months where nothing, nothing and suddenly it's <laughs> June, and I'm going, oh, what can I, now what? Now what? <laughs> what can I grow really fast? Yeah. Right. Do you I, put yours in the ground? Do you put them in bags, buckets? What's um, your... We have a couple of, my wife encouraged me. <laughs> um, AKA. Ma <laughs> here, do this. Um, <laughs> um, many, many years ago to create some raised beds, some like, they're basically four by eight raised beds. Okay. And so we, we do plant them in the ground. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's kind of a fun activity, you know. It's it's big enough so whenever our son was was smaller, he could come out and you know dig the trench together, and mm -hmm. he'd go out and plop in the seed or, yeah. or the the part of the potato, and it works out. And pretty it works good. out perfectly. So yeah, it's that time of year, and that is that. Would you say that's a pretty easy one to grow? It's, it's a pretty easy one to grow. The fussy. one problem we've run into at my house is um, mice. Oh. Mice getting into you have that. To share. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Both with white potato and sweet potato, they seem to have found that they were growing quite well in our garden, uh -huh. and I would go to harvest them, and they look perfect, and then you go to grab them, and they're hollow, because a mouse has yeah. just tunneled, tunneled right in. Tunneled in there, yeah. and, sure. had and they're it like, spill. hey, thanks for the... <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so we have been... That's one reason I started trying to do stuff in pots, because it mm -hmm. seemed to deter the mice a little bit. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so you've got options. Yeah. Raised beds, directly in the ground, grow right. bags. Yeah. Um, did you want to do another demonstration or do you want to take a question? Um, let's do a question. Okay. Yeah. This one is from, this is question 91. We'll talk about some shrubs here. This is from Paula. Okay. And she wants to know what are some good bushes or shrubs to grow and what problems do you run into <laughs> when growing them? Do a whole show on this. Yeah, it's like a whole a course. Minute presentation <laughs> yeah, right. on the low end. Um, yeah, it, you know now is it's spring, so people are going to start thinking about planting. Mm. What am I going to do? Um, you know, with shrubs, it, as with my answer earlier, it depends. <laughs> uh, you know, do you have sun or shade? Do you want to be you know three or four feet as a foundation planting? Do you want a back border, or you want something a little taller? And so I've got a couple of recommendations um, that are kind of general purpose plants, maybe some folks haven't heard of. Um, aronia or, um, uh, oh, no, I can't come up with a regular. Um, oh, I don't know what else. There's one called yeah. Lowscape Mound and Lowscape Hedger. It's, uh, it's a, newer, um, a newer plant that's out there, a little bit newer. Um, aronia melanocarpa. Um, it's not coming it. to me. Isn't so, that, it always happens like that, it, doesn't it? I'm it ready does. to Google. It I'm does. ready. Google it. But that's a, that's a nice, short, compact plant. Okay. Um, it has um, white flowers in, in the summer, and it has a group, uh, great fruit set. Uh, so most of those are going to be a, either a black or a red berry or a fruit. Mm. And then the fall color is fantastic, and the reds and purples, and, and some oranges even. So that's kind of a nice one. Okay. Um, another one that's uh, I've just tried out just recently is uh, Button Bush. There's oh, a, one called button Sugar bush. Shack. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, also like a three to four foot shrub. It has these white flowers that are kind of a, um, that look a little bit like a, like a sweet gum fruit. Okay. You know, kind of, okay. kind of a spiky ball. Huh. Um, and then they turn kind of red and then also a nice fall color. Ooh. So that is something that's uh, maybe a little bit not on somebody's radar already. Hmm. Okay. Um, th so those are great for the foundation, and then if you're talking about something taller for like a back border, um, one of the ones that I, I feel like is very, very, um, could be placed in a lot of different landscapes is a black hall viburnum. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, not, it's taller, but it's not too tall, right? So 8 to 10 feet, grows fairly slowly, great habitat for birds, it has the early flower set of white, great fall color, good fruit set. Um, there's just a lot of really positive things about that, and it's a native shrub. Okay. Now, what problems do folks run into when they set these small shrubs or bushes um, in their yards? Typically, the biggest problem people have is they'll run out and um, under the front bay window, they're going to plant some shrubs that maybe are a little too big for the space. Mm -hmm. So something that's labeled dwarf, like a dwarf burning bush. Mm -hmm. Um, dwarf burning bush still wants to be 10 to 12 feet tall, <laughs> right? Dwarf is relative, dwarf right? Dwarf is yes. very relative. Hey, it depends, right? Yes, yes. It, it, it depends. <laughs> and, and so then they find they've, they've created a make work program. Because <laughs> yep. you're out there trimming it two or three times a year and you're uh -huh. just in... You're, you're not enjoying it. You're not no. enjoying it because it's a, it's a make work program. And most people want to set it, leave it, forget it, maybe touch to it, touch it once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's probably the biggest thing I would say, um, particularly with evergreens, uh, you know, for a while, like mugo pine was a big thing, mm -hmm. and now there's some other um, small spruces that 
like, oh, it's cute and it's little and it comes in a little two-gallon mm. pot and it's about yay big. It's and then so suddenly, perfect. five years from now, it's like... <laughs> you can't see out the window. Yeah, yeah, right. Where'd the house go? <laughs> Colorado blue spruce is Colorado my example spruce. for that. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's, it's the perfect but shape tree. But so if tree. it says dwarf right. and your, you know, your average homeowner like myself just goes out and goes, all right, it says dwarf. I'm going to go. You know, yeah. we just have the pots to read. You guys go in with the inside knowledge and it's like that dwarf. Well, yeah. most of us have Google in our back pocket. <laughs> That's true. So look, That's out, true. look up if this is the look it up and see what Google says, but also look up the non-dwarf version. And gotcha. if that's like 30 feet tall, the dwarf's not necessarily going to be three. <laughs> yeah. If the original's 30, yeah. we're looking, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and so a lot of times, what I always encourage people to do is look, at, like there's almost always the Latin, right? The botanical mm -hmm. name mm -hmm. on, on the tag. If you Google it, yeah. you're probably going to get something from a botanic garden or an arboretum or something mm -hmm. along those lines or a university. And they're going to give you the skinny. Yeah, more reliable. Yeah, they're not trying to sell you anything. They're just trying to provide you information. So right. take a little bit more time in the aisle once you mm -hmm. find one you like and Google the, the Latin name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. All right, Jen, this one's for you. Uh, let's see. Dan Sullivan wants to know, when is the correct time to start seeds indoors in our area? And continuing with the theme, it depends. depends. It depends. <laughs> um, if you were planning on growing onions from seed, you're late. Um, if you're planning on growing tomatoes, you're right about on time. You're a little late to be starting peppers, I would, I would say. Um, you're a little early to be starting things like cucumbers and squash. They mm -hmm. don't need very much time to um, start ahead. They actually do better if they're not in a transplant situation mm -hmm. for too terribly long they don't like being transplanted so i guess it just depends what you're what, what you're, you're going for. for chuck um gave us his planting oh, yes. schedule the coveted yes. planting schedule mm. which i didn't know yeah. until oh. afterwards everyone was it's like chuck mud. gave you his planting wow. schedule <laughs> right you're special I <laughs> yeah I you know you rank <laughs> so it is on our website you can uh, search for mid american gardener on wyll and you'll get the coveted Voigt <laughs> uh, planting schedule um that it's got what's on there i think his was mostly transplant so if you're looking for uh, direct sow plants um read your seed packet yeah. yeah yeah that'll work too yeah. okay Rusty, what do you got? We've got about 10 minutes left. Okay, well, I restocked while you were talking. And <laughs> nice, we brought, nice. We brought some fresh, uh, fresh things up. So be, because we're sort of in the spring of the year, this is a nice transition time. Um, one of the things that often comes up is sort of like, okay, when do I cut back my, my remaining perennials? How far do I cut them back? That sort of thing. Um, when I first got into this industry, it was clear the bed in the fall. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of gotten a little smarter about it. And, you know, you can leave some material up. It's a nice food source for birds over the winter and some other things. Uh, it's also habitat for um, a lot of beneficial insects, your pollinators and things like that. And so um, one of the sort of the newer trends, um, and I, it's good practice, is to instead of cutting everything back completely in the spring, we're going to cut things back to maybe eight, maybe even 18 inches. And here's why. You can see inside this guy. I don't know if you're going to catch that or not. But there is a, um, there's a, it's a hollow center. Gotcha. So it is completely, like the whole inside of that is completely hollow. Mm -hmm. This is off of a sedum plant, like an autumn joy or mm -hmm. a matrona mm -hmm. or something along those lines. And if you cut this off at about, you know, up, up to here or so, mm -hmm. what, what you're going to do is leave that. New foliage will come up, will come up around it. And next fall, whenever the, the, the uh, bees and the wasps and the other things like that that are looking for a place to lay their eggs, they're gonna, that's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave the material up, and then they're going to pack the, pack the place uh, with some mud mm -hmm. or whatever to kind of seal it in. And then in the spring, whenever you also, the next year, don't cut it back too far, they'll emerge from that, that uh, so it's an overwintering habitat. Hmm. Um, I, I brought another sample, and we'll try to see if we can zoom in on this one. This is Agastaki, or hyssop, uh, Blue Fortune, and it that's also it. has a hollow stem. So, which is really cool to think about, you know, because there's all these hidden things and then like little treasures that you just didn't understand how nature maybe was working. And, and this is one way you can keep, you know, a lot of, a lot of the beneficial insects yes. um, in your own backyard instead of cutting them off, hauling them off, taking them to wherever they or burning them or, or whatever. Um, there's just, um, you know, leave some of that refuse around in just a month or two, new green will come up and you'll never know it. 
And then, I, it's been hard trying to keep my husband out yeah. of the beds because he, he likes to tidy up. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, put the rake away. <laughs> He's one of those guys, right? He is. Like, He's a tidy the guy. The <laughs> second that it warms up a little bit or the calendar, you know, hits March, he's ready to get out there and clean up. And I'm yeah. like, buddy. Yeah. We have to let the insects do their thing. They're they're waking yeah. up yet. Yeah, that's right. So they're still they're still asleep. I'm gonna make oh, sure like he watches this. Yep. I like this method of where you're saying leave a little bit, but yeah. you leave a little hotel. Because yeah. I struggle with this. Yeah. I struggle with this because everyone is saying, "Oh, leave it up until the insects emerge," and then I'm like, "Oh, this is licensed to procrastinate. Yeah, I don't have to right. do it." Well, and then you and, come in and it's like, "Okay, now I've got to use got, the pruners instead mm, of the, the head yes, shears." Yes, and now all this and, new stuff's growing in, and it's June. It's June, <laughs> yes. right? Right, and it's hard to get to. And, and so I can't is, get the mulch down, and it's just way. More, it's a make work program it, again. It is. It is, and so it, it kind of working with nature and still. Some you know mm -hmm. it's you're not. It's I'm a not win saying, win this way. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and the the stems from two years ago, those are just going to disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know it's not a problem. No, you've yeah. given me a whole new perspective. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I, I have for years done done the exact opposite. So uh, you know we're all hopeful, hopefully we're all getting a little smarter. <laughs> yes. with these, right? Um, along those same lines, we've got another question. This is about bulbs and pots. So we've got folks asking when they can begin to wake up their elephant ears, um, their cannas, and is, is it time for that? Can we start? Yeah, I, I would say it is. And okay. that's something that a lot of people don't really necessarily know they can do. You can start elephant ears and cannas indoors in pots where it's nice and toasty and warm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just you would bring them outside not until about mid-May because they're warm season tropical mm -hmm. plants. They are not going to tolerate 50 degrees <laughs> very well. Um, highs of 50s and lows towards freezing, they're just not going yeah, to. But not. definitely get a jump on them get, and then you're going to get ahead of, ahead of the game. Um, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I love the elephant ears, you know, they're mm -hmm. just so cool and Aren't big. They? And you can harvest them in the fall. and. But they need some it. time to really get going. And, and I feel like when I'm looking at things in June, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. going, I haven't gotten those, I haven't <laughs> gotten right. those elephant ears in the ground yet. They're really crusty and <laughs> yes. like right. shriveled up yes. back there. Maybe we can get them going. But yeah, in, a, in an ideal world, yes, I would get them started now. Okay. Move them out. Um, again, along those same lines, what about dahlias? Dahlias? I've heard people dahlias, say dahlias, dahlias and dahlias. Is there a proper way or is it just preference? Okay, well, we're going to go with however, yeah. dahlias. Yeah. Um, when is it time to start those? I mean, are, are we, we've got another person asking about that. I would think it's kind of, we're in the realm of starting them now. Yeah, Same I thing. So. I've actually done some dahlias in pots and never, never um, taken them out of the soil, just moved the pot in the garage. <laughs> it's worked. <laughs> That's really? Cheating. It like is it. complete cheating, but it is it has worked for like two to three years before yeah. I've just kind of refreshed we, it, re, mm -hmm. repotted it. You get root bound. Yep. Hey, whatever works. Okay, we've got about three minutes left. Did you break? Did you have anything else that you uh, wanted to demonstrate no. or show? Okay, let's take another couple of questions. Um, Rusty, we'll do this one for you. Since we had sort of a mild winter, someone was asking, should we expect this extremely mild and dry winter to affect our gardens and yards this year? This year, and then are there any measures that we should take to offset any ill effects? So, is it bad for the garden when we have a mild winter? You know, I wouldn't say that's necessarily bad. I also wouldn't say that you know a particularly harsh winter you know is particularly bad. You know, it's sort of a you know if you got to think of it on a little bit lar larger scale, a little, little larger time frame. Um, in this particular case, really the biggest challenge that I would see is um, that the dryness we kind of went into the winter with, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that ship kind of sailed back in the fall. Um, but if, in general, if you see going into the winter, we're in a dry situation, um, it's always a good idea, especially with your evergreens, uh, to give them a good drink before kind of putting everything to bed for the, for the year. Um, this time of year, you know, it's mild really isn't the concern and certainly we've had uh, plentiful rains in the last few weeks so we're, we're definitely going in with that soil moisture re renewed uh, which is a which is a good way to start the season excellent well that sounds good news yeah. that's a nice side of, sort of forecast going into yeah and i and may, maybe we'll have a few more you know it's always what i've heard things. is a few more insects or something mm -hmm. like that that are going to be um, prevalent uh it, it, you know 
it'll it's going to happen it's going to happen <laughs> right we might get some few more things that have overwintered that wouldn't normally oh. overwinter mm -hmm. good like and bad <laughs> good and bad insects year. and plants there was one row of cannas that i just it was october mm -hmm. and i just thought you know what you guys just survive if you yeah. can. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see if yeah. they make it. So anywho, okay. Well, we are out of time. Thank you guys so much for coming mm -hmm. in. And welcome back. Hopefully we'll see you a little bit more and Absolutely. come out to visit you and see what you're doing out there. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. All right. And thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. If you have questions, you can send them in to us at yourgarden at gmail.com. And of course, you can search for us on Facebook. Just look for Mid-American Gardener. And we'll see you next time. Good night.